Merritt, and today on Thinking Outside the Box, I am going to show you how I created these holographic polymer clay arrowhead pendants. This one has a dream catcher with feathers, another dream catcher in a heart shape with feathers, and another with holographic flakes. These were really fun to make. Um, I created a bezel around the edges to help when you um, put the resin in. And I am gonna show you from start to finish how I created these. The only thing that I'm not gonna show you in this tutorial is finishing up with the resin. I will show you the finished pieces, but I have a separate video on resin and it just seems kind of silly to always, since I use resin so much, to always put it in the video. So to save time, I've got a separate video and I will put a link to it in the description below this video. So make sure to check that out. So to create these, I'm gonna zoom out and show you what we need for supplies. Let me just put these over here. The first thing that you're gonna need is some polymer clay. My go-to clay is Primo. I love it, and you're gonna need black. I love it for durability, for strength, um, for flex flexibility. Um, you can use a different kind of clay, but I use Primo. You're going to also need an extruder set or you could roll little snakes out by hand. You don't really need this. You will also need some silver foil powder. And this is something new at RJ Crafts. Uh, Rhonda over at RJ Crafts now has a huge selection of mica powders. You have got to check it out. This stuff is gorgeous. It looks just like silver when you put it on your clay. And that's what I used around the edges here. And I let a little bit of the black show through to give it uh, some antiquing. But I put it on the back as well, and it really looks like silver. So you're gonna need some silver foil powder or silver mica. Uh, you are gonna need holographic flakes. Check these out. Love these. <laughs> There's so much you can do with this. You can also uh, put these on before you bake your clay. These can go in the oven, so that's a bonus. For the loops, I use these little eyelets or um, eye screws and these can also be found at RJ Crafts. I will have links to everything in the description below. For the back behind the um, dream catchers and behind the holo flakes, I used Born Pretty Powder. Um, I used the blue and the purple. And I've got those here, and I will have links for those. You're gonna need arrowhead cutters, and these can also be found at RJ Crafts. It's cutter set number 105. I believe it's still cutter set uh, number 105, but I will put the link in the description. So you will need that. You will need tools. RJ Crafts has some wonderful tools in the tool section on the site. And I like to use this to smooth my edges. And I use this tool here to create my design around the bezel. So, I mean, you can use a toothpick, you can use anything that kind of shape and it will produce the same results. You're gonna need a brush, some sort of brush for your mica powders to apply your silver foil and for your blue and your purple powders. And I've got pumpkin up here trying to run away with the 
wrapper that the tool was in. You're also going to need, <laughs> pumpkin, let go of my sleeve. You're gonna need a pair of scissors because you are going to have to fussy cut, uh, meaning cutting around edges. If you're a scrapbooker, you'll understand what fussy cutting is. Um, you're gonna be going around the edges of what I used for the dream catchers. And I'll tell you, all it is, is a roll of holographic nail foils. And I will also have a link for these in the description. You get a roll and on the roll, pumpkin, you can't definitely cannot have this. You get all different designs of dream catchers, all sorts of beautiful designs. And maybe if I put it against the black, you can see it better. Let's see. Well, I don't really have a spot on the black that, but oh, I am in love with these. So that is how I added the dream catchers to my pieces. And you just simply cut them out and I will show you the whole process in this video. So I am going to go ahead and get set up and I will be back. All right, I am back and I have rolled out my clay uh, with my pasta machine. Uh, one is the thickest setting and this is on a three. Both of these are on a three. I also have a little ball of clay that we are going to put in the extruder. Now this is a walnut hollow and I think I bought this online. I can't remember, I got it quite a while ago. And it comes in a kit and you get all of these um, different things that you can extrude the plate out into, all these different shapes. I am using the largest cutter and the fourth largest cutter out of the arrowhead cutter set. And today we are going to create the large pendant with the dream catcher and the smaller one with the holo flakes. So first thing you need to do is have your clay and we'll start with the larger one. And this is rolled out to a number three on my pasta machine. And I am going to find my blade because I am going to cut this sheet in half and we're gonna double this. So I wanna make sure that I'm gonna have enough clay to do this. So we go ahead and cut it. And I might not have enough. I might have to roll this out. Yeah, it's not going to be enough. I'll be back. Okay, I am back with a larger piece. Number three on the pasta machine. I am going to cut that in half. <laughs> Left my blade over here. And I am going to double this. So I'm gonna put this one on top, which will give us a thicker piece. Now the first thing I'm going to do is cut my shape and I like to use an acrylic block because it gives me a little more even pressure. So go ahead and cut that. And Pull my clay up and there's our arrowhead. I 
I'm not gonna worry about cleaning up any edges right now, but they look pretty darn good. So you can see that the thickness is twice of what we had. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is put some of my conditioned clay. You want this to be fairly soft when you put it into your extruder. Or, you, like I said, you can roll these out by hand, too. I'm going to go ahead and put it in there. Put my disc in, which is dirty, and screw it on there. And I'm going to extrude a snake. Ugh. And this is the part that's hard on your hands. And my hands have been working pretty hard lately. I'm sure a lot of you know that I got a she shed and we're, re we're uh, doing the inside to turn it into my studio. So I've been doing a lot of work in there and it's a lot of hard work on my hands. All right, so have a pretty good sized snake. And for this particular project, I do like to use one of these because you get a very consistent snake out of that. But you know, you can still hand roll it. You don't need an extruder. Now for this part, we are going to make the bezel with this and move this stuff out of the way. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go around this whole edge on top. So I like to start down here at the bottom and I have a little extra that I put over the edge because we're gonna go ahead and cut that. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna follow the edge of it, but you're on top. You're not putting it on the side. You're putting it on top of the arrow. And just push down a little bit. You don't need any bacon bond or anything like that for this because you're putting raw clay to raw clay. You do, however, need something to cut it with at the end. So you're just gonna follow all the way around the shape, make your curves. And I apologize, my hands are such a mess. It is not easy doing construction. I call it construction, my husband did most of it. And there we go with the cat hair. <laughs> uh, that's one of the things I'm not gonna miss when I'm out in my she shed. I'm not gonna miss kitties fur everywhere and cats walking through my projects. And well, we'll get that later. It doesn't wanna come off. So you just follow it around, follow the shape best as you can, doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. These are fantasy arrowheads. So they're however you want them to be. And hopefully I'm still in the shot. And you come down to the bottom. And that's where I just take my blade and cut it. First I start over here and make a cut. Get rid of that. I got pumpkin playing under the table. If you're hearing noises, he has found something all right, so then you just take those two and then you smooth them. 
Go around the whole piece until you're happy with the way it looks, until you're happy with everything is where it's supposed to be. And that's where this tool comes in handy, where it can help you do your edges a little, a little cleaner. Maybe I can get that cat hair up now. Yeah, we did it. All right, I need to smooth that out a bit. And I'm not really concerned with that because when we put the design in it, that's all going to, um, <laughs> all going to blend in there. All right, when you are happy with the way it looks, which I am, I am going to just kind of smooth the edges where the snake meets the clay. And I can do that with this tool too. But you know what, we'll wait. We're gonna go ahead and put our design in next. And all I did for that was I made, to, to get this look, was I just made little X's. That's it just little X's and we'll start up here. I took this tool here and push there, push there. And that's all I did. And I did it the whole way around. Just little X's is all this is. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up these little X's and I'll be back. Okay, I am back and I have finished all my little X's to form a design on the bezel. And I just took my clay up off the tile and just smoothed out my edges the best that I could and rounded them to go to match up with the bezel. And you just do that with your fingers. So I'm gonna put this back down on the tile. And the next thing we're going to do is we are going to put our mica powders inside of this area here. And for this, I'm using the Born Pretty Blue and the Born Pretty Purple. And it's entirely up to you. I just kind of, you know, put it here and there, wherever I, you know, wanted to put it. It was, there was no rhyme or reason to it. So you just take a little bit of the Born Pretty Powder and you wanna be careful not to get your edges because we're gonna do those in silver. But, you know, just put it anywhere you want inside of this area. And I just kinda splashed it here and there. And then took the blue, put my cap on there so I don't spill it. I'm good at that. Then I took the blue and went in the areas that don't have purple. And just hit everything that doesn't have any purple to it. Because you can put it over the purple, but it's not going to stick to it because the other mica is already there. So that's another reason you really don't want to get it on your edges because then your silver isn't going to stick because you've already got a powder there and no clay for it to stick to. All right, that looks good. I'm gonna cover these up. 
and just kind of go over this to get any excess powder moved around. And like I said, I mean, you don't have to use blue and purple. You use whatever you want. You could use paints inside of here if you wanted to. Um, that's entirely up to you. This is just how I did it. All right, so that's done. Now you're going to take your silver, silver foil powder from RJ Crafts or whatever silver foil. Silver mica and this are two different things. This is, it looks just like silver. You'll see as I do this. You're going to, it looks like the cap has plenty in it. And all I'm going to do is put a little on my fingers and I don't want it to get down into the X's. So I'm just going to dab it on to the surface, leaving, so it's just hitting the raised portions, the X's that we made this uh, mica is not going to get down in there. And that kind of gives it an antique look. And I like that look, plus it, uh, this just, it accentuates the raised edges. All right. So we have the top part done. We're gonna leave this out because the next thing we're gonna do is clean our hands off. And we are going to insert our little eyelet screw. And we're gonna pick this up carefully. And I'm going to put the eyelet screw right in the middle of the clay on the top and you just push it in. Now, when we resin this, that eyelet screw is also going to be reinforced with the resin. But for right now, that's where it's going to go. And then our next step is putting our mica on the sides and the back. And I'm gonna go ahead and clean this tile off. I'm gonna go ahead and put the mica on the back first. I think that'll be easier. And we're just gonna take our brush and get the purple and blue off of it. Dab a little in there and then just paint this on. Well, wow, my brush is shedding. Paint this on to the back. You could have done this with your fingers too if you wanted to. And now we're gonna hit the sides. And that's just simply taking powder and running it along the edge. And I'm not gonna bore you with that, so I'm going to do that off camera, and I will be back. Okay, I am back, and I have done the sides. I'll go ahead and pick it up. I have done the sides and the back, and now I'm gonna set this aside, and we're gonna work on the smaller one. But isn't that pretty? I love that Born Pretty powder. So I'm gonna put this over here. Hopefully a cat won't knock it off the table. And we're gonna go ahead and work on 
the smaller arrowhead. And we're gonna do it the same exact way. Take a piece of clay, gonna cut that in half. <laughs> gonna get the darn furs off of it. Ay, ay, ay. Put the two pieces on top of each other. And here's our smaller cutter. Go ahead and smooth that out. Make sure they're both stuck to each other. Go ahead and cut your shape. And pull the excess clay up. Now where I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of it off camera. Since you saw how I made the first one, that's exactly what we're gonna do with this little guy and I'll be back. All right, I am back and I have completed the smaller one. And as you can see, all the edges have the silver foil powder on them. It's kind of, they'll slide if I do this, but you can see the edges there. I've got my loops in there to make them into a pendant. And what I'm going to do now is go ahead and put these in the oven at 275 for one hour. We are not going to put the Holo Flakes or the Dreamcatcher in until after bake. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, 275 for one hour, and I'll be back. Okay, I am back and these are out of the oven and they're cooled down. And now I'm gonna show you how to add your holo inclusions. And I couldn't find a piece of black. So I put this on a, on a darker things so that you could see the holo a little better and all the different designs you get on this. And you get a good amount. I mean, it's one meter you get. And um, there's several, several different designs. It's pretty cool. Now, normally what you would do on, if you were to use these on your nails, is you would, um, put down a, a special glue and then you put the foil on it and then you rip it up. Um, I have tried that on clay and I cannot perfect that. Um, I hate to say that I can't. I haven't done it enough to perfect it. And what I have, I just didn't like the way it looked. So I want the whole image on there. Sometimes even on the nail with the nail glue that that you use, you won't get that whole image. So I'd rather have the whole thing. Now, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same image that we did on this one. So that would be right here on my sheet. And I'm just gonna cut it off of here for now. And we'll go back over it and be a little more precise. But for right now, we're just gonna cut around it without cutting the image. And I'm gonna put this over here, move these out of the way. And here is our image. Now, I still like to do the side down uh, that you would with the glue, and it's, it's somewhat hard to figure out which one that is, but if you feel it, one side is a little bit smoother than the other. Oop, well, and this one, they, they look the same from what I can tell, but this side here just feels a little rougher and it, it's really kind of hard. This side definitely feels smoother. So this is where we're going to fussy cut and 
you're just going to cut around the image as close as you can get because we are just going to lay this onto the clay and in order for it to fit in that area it has to be a little closer to the image and this is the fun part because it's kind of hard to see unless you're on a black background and that's kind of hard to do while you're cutting it so I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting this off camera and I will be back. The resins that I choose to use, uh, the UV resins, I like the Easy Dome from RJ Crafts and that's a slow curing resin. It takes about 30 minutes under the UV light. The other one that I like to use um, just to give a coat on a bead or if I have a thick pendant, you know, just a coat on it, anything that's not flexible, I like to use the Tiny Pandora Deep Shine Brush On UV Finish. And that is what I usually use on the sides of my pendants. And then on the front and the back, I use the Easy Dome from RJ Crafts. I'm not going to go through the whole resin process like I said before. I have a uh, uh, tutorial where I use both of these resins on one of my pieces. And like I said, that will be in the description below this video. Um, but I am gonna show you how I get these pieces on here, the Holo Flakes and these lovely, beautiful Holo Flakes here. Oh, this is just such eye candy. I have put some in a little dish to work out of, so I'll put that there. And what I do is I'm going to use, this is going to be my adhesive until I put this coat of resin on. So I'm gonna show you how I adhere the holographic nail foil onto here and the flakes onto that one. So the first thing I do is make sure after I cut my image that I have the correct side up. And like I said, one side will be real smooth. You just have to feel it with your finger and you can tell. And honestly, I don't think it matters because both sides are holographic. Um, they're just as pretty as the other. So you, after you cut it, you wanna just make sure that it's going to fit in that area. And on this one, I added an extra feather at the bottom. I'm not gonna do that at, on uh, this one, but you can do that. The, um, there's all sorts of wonderful feathers and stuff on that sheet. So I see that it absolutely will fit in this area. So I am going to put just a little bit of the Tiny Pandora Deep Shine on there and spread it around with a toothpick. Just a teeny little bit. Just enough where we can get the piece to adhere and stay. Because we're gonna put this under the UV light. So I'm gonna spread this around and you wanna be a little careful with your toothpick. You don't want to scratch the surface. Um, Pumpkin, I knew he was gonna, I knew he was gonna come and try and get this. Yes, kitties like shiny things. Maybe I was a kitty in another life because I just love shiny stuff. So I may have to roll that up and put it away. But anyway, back to this. Um, just carefully spread it around with your toothpick because you don't want to um, scratch the surface where this mica is. And I might have to add just a little bit more because I want to do an even coat, but a very thin coat. Um, because like I said, this is not, um, the Tiny Pandora is not a doming resin. It's strictly uh, for just putting a shiny coat on something 
but on this particular piece, I am using it as a glue. And I'm gonna add just a little bit more. Pumpkin, you, you know, you could have come into the video like earlier when I wasn't working with resin, but now you gotta be here when I'm doing this and I definitely don't want you walking through this. All right, so we're gonna spread this around. And this is going to work as our glue just to hold this piece down. And you won't see the clear around it. It'll blend right in. And no one will ever know that you just stuck it down on there and you didn't glue it and rip it off. All right, so we've got that even. Now I'm going to lay this down and then you can push it down to make sure all air bubbles are out. I don't know if you saw that, but you could see the air just coming out of the bottom of it. So you push it down, make sure it's in the spot you want it and it's completely flat. up a little because that leaf was a little bent. Not leaf, feather. And this looks pretty good. Um, where I want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this under the UV lamp. And I will be back. All right, that has cured. And that is what it looks like right now. It's going to look smoother once I put the other resin on it. So now we're going to do this one with the holo flakes. And we're going to do the same thing where we're going to add a little bit of the tiny Pandora brush on UV resin. Hey, pumpkin, dude. <laughs> Just a little bit. Close that up and get that out of pumpkin's way. All right, we are going to even this out. And that looks good. Now I'm gonna start adding my holo flakes. And all you need to do is the best thing is to lay them flat, lay them out on a flat surface so they're not bunched up in the bag. And with your toothpick having some resin on it, it'll pick those flakes right up and you put them wherever you would like. Just spread them around however you want them. You could put lots or you could put just a few. You could put another um, of the holographic nail foil and then put this around it another one of the images on there and then you know put these around it or just do like I did and put them 
all over, which looks really pretty because they all will be in different directions and will show all the different holographic colors in them. And there's big pieces and little pieces and just make sure your toothpick is wet with some resin and that will help you pick up your pieces and then you can put them exactly where you would like. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting these in place and I'll be back. So I have all the holo flakes where I want them. And I mean, you can easily move them around. Look at it from every angle. Make sure that you're happy with the placement because before you cure it, you can just move them wherever you want. And I think that looks good. I am gonna go ahead and cure this and then off camera, I'm gonna go ahead and because we used the silver foil powder, you want to seal that somehow. So this is your choice at this point. You can either put a varnish like um, um, Varathane on the tops of the bezel and the sides and the back, or you could use the tiny Pandora uh, brush-on UV resin on the top of the bezel and the sides and the back. And that is what I did with these pieces here. And then I went ahead with the RJ Crafts Easy Dome and did the tops. So I would resin that first after this is cured or set in place, go ahead and, and uh, what I would do is brush on, just like the UV resin says, the tiny Pandora brush on UV resin, brush it on the edges, the sides, and the back on both pieces, and then dome it with the RJ Crafts um, Easy Dome resin. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera, and then I will be back to show you the finished pieces and announce what this tutorial giveaway is going to be. And here are our finished pieces. Very sparkly, very holographic. I just love the holographic glitter flakes. I think they're so pretty. Could just watch this for hours. <laughs> so I hope that you found this fun and useful and oh wait I almost forgot the giveaway for this tutorial is this is sponsored by RJ Crafts very gracious to do this giveaway is going to be this whole set of the arrowhead cutters as well as the silver foil powder. So you will get, the giveaway winner will get the RJ Crafts sil silver foil powder and the whole set of six arrowhead cutters. That is a cool giveaway. So all you need to do to enter is to like, comment, subscribe if you want to, to my channel, and share this video on social media. You can share it on Facebook, you can share it on Twitter, you can share it on Pinterest, wherever you wanna share it on social media. But you need to share, like, and comment. The drawing will be on the 15th of March and will be announced on my Facebook page on Dreamweaver Designs Jewelry. I will leave a link in the description of my Facebook page where you will be able to, on the 15th, see who the lucky winner is. So I wanna thank you for joining me. I really enjoy bringing tutorials to you. I like to keep them fun and free. 
And of course, next Friday, I will have another one for you. So until then, bye. Have a great weekend.